People often think of Europe as boring when it comes to wildlife, but I'm going to show you that there's still some wildness left on this continent. It's home to the world's oldest feral species, the world's first de-extinct animal introduction, and two Asian species introduced in the last decade to fill in for cousins extinct on this continent for thousands of years, but we'll get to those later. In this video, we'll take a look at all the megafauna living wild in Europe today, both native and introduced. To clarify, megafauna is any animal weighing more than 46 kg or 100 pounds. First up, we'll look at the goat and sheep subfamily. Europe happens to be home to the world's largest member of this group, the musk ox. Yes, despite its name and appearance, the musk ox is actually in the goat clade, not the wild cattle clade. This behemoth once lived across Nordic Europe, but went extinct on the continent at least 7,000 years ago. Thankfully, they were successfully reintroduced to Norway in the 1940s, following some failed attempts in the years prior. The Norwegian musk ox population now numbers somewhere between 2 and 300, and has even spread to Sweden. Not bad considering they are all descended from just 11 musk oxen that survived that 1940s introduction. Europe is also home to two ibex species, the aptly named Alpine ibex of the European Alps and the Iberian ibex of Iberia. A third ibex species also, if you include all the feral goat herds found across Europe, including my own country, Ireland. For those that don't know, a feral animal is an animal that lives wild now but is descended from a domesticated species. A famous example being the wild mustangs of USA, which are descended from horses brought over by Spanish conquistadors. Europe's smallest member of the goat clade is the chamois. If you've ever seen a video of a goat being dropped off a cliff by an eagle, it's usually a golden eagle and a very unfortunate chamois. There are no native sheep in Europe, but nonetheless we have two species living wild here today. There are Barbary sheep, an African species living wild and breeding in Spain, having escaped from hunting reserves, though they are not true sheep and are actually more closely related to goats. We also have European mouflon living wild in most countries in mainland Europe, having been introduced from Corsica and Sardinia. We actually once thought they were truly native to those islands, but it seems as though we were wrong and that instead they are the world's oldest feral species. They are actually a very primitive form of domestic sheep that were introduced to Corsica and Sardinia sometime around 7,000 years ago likely as both livestock and hunting quarry. The only rival for world's oldest feral animal is the dingo, though it seems the dingo went feral sometime after 5,000 years ago. Next we'll look at Europe's big boys, the three wild bovine species, one of which, the European bison, has been reintroduced to the UK, a reintroduction project named Wilder Bleen, which is partnered with the sponsor of this video, Rewild at Heart. Rewild at Heart creates sustainably made fashion and woodcraft products with a portion of profits from every sale going towards supporting rewilding projects. They are partnered with some incredible projects, with each partner linked to specific products, like this cosy beaver beanie, which supports the Beaver Trust, an amazing organisation that has been reintroducing beavers around the UK, meaning if you purchase a beaver design, you directly support beaver reintroductions and get to wear the proof. Or you can get yourself a bison hoodie, for example, and support Wilder Bleen, a really ambitious project that has brought bison back to the UK after a 6,000 year absence. Maybe a cosy beaver beanie or bison hoodie is the perfect Christmas gift for the nature lover in your life. If so, make sure to follow Rewild at Heart on Instagram to keep an eye on their Black Friday sales. All viewers of this channel get 10% off on all products by using the code NERD10 at checkout or clicking the link in the description below. By doing so, you support this channel too as I receive a little commission. Back to the bovines. We've got three species living wild in Europe now. European bison, feral cattle, which are descendants of the extinct aurochs, and water buffalo. Interestingly, for a period in the 1920s, none of these lived wild in Europe, but thanks to rewilding projects, they've all returned. European bison went extinct in the wild in 1927, but luckily, around 50 remained in captivity. Brothers Lutz and Heinz Heck a pair of Nazi zoologists set out to save the species from extinction and created a breeding program using just 12 captive bison they found to be genetically viable. That program saw its first wild reintroductions in Białowieża Forest, Poland, 1952. There are now more than 8,500 European bison in the world and over 6,000 of those live wild. 
Weirdly, the Hegg brothers, rightly controversial figures for their Nazi ties, have also had a massive hand in the rewilding of domestic cattle in Europe. The Hegg brothers were tasked with de-extincting the aurochs, the wild ancestor of domestic cattle. To do this, they collected primitive cattle breeds from around Europe that possessed traits passed down from their ancestor and crossbred them to resemble the aurochs in behaviour and appearance. The Heck brothers claimed to have de-extincted the aurochs and released them in German forests in the late 1920s to restore the German landscape, making them the world's first de-extinct animal reintroduction. Unfortunately, the breed now known as Heck cattle is far from a perfect creation of their ancestor. Many of their physical features just aren't a match. Nonetheless, to this day, Heck cattle are used in rewilding projects and critically in aurochs backbreeding projects like Taurus and Orient. There are thousands of free roaming backbred aurochs proxies across European rewilding projects today, but one could argue they're not fully wild, as they still have to be managed within the laws around keeping cattle, i.e. they have to be monitored and given veterinary care when necessary. There is at least one fully wild cattle herd in Europe today though, the feral cattle of the Chernobyl exclusion zone. Starting as a herd of seven, they now number around 20, which may not sound like a lot, but when you consider that they were a specialized dairy breed that have had to learn to survive without human care, cope with the radiation, as well as predation from wolves and bears, it's pretty impressive that they tripled in number. Bubulus morensis the European water buffalo went extinct probably around 12,800 years ago. But thanks to rewilding Europe, we now have water buffalo living wild in the Danube Delta. Introductions began in 2019 and the herd has been successfully breeding and helping to restore the wetlands biodiversity. These are domestic Asian water buffalo that have been set free in the Delta as a proxy for their extinct European cousins. Next we look at the deer. Starting with Europe's largest invasive species, the white-tailed deer, native to both North and South America, but with a large non-native population in Finland, where it was introduced as a game species. There's one other non-native megafaunal deer in Europe, the Sika deer, which is Europe's most widely distributed invasive megafauna. The native deer of Europe include roe deer, red deer, moose, which are officially called elk in UK English, and something similar in most Western European languages. Not to be confused with North American elk, Cervus canadensis, which were named elk by accident when early English colonists assumed these massive deer were the elk they'd heard so much about from Europe. Other native deer include reindeer in Northern Europe. Reindeer live alongside musk oxen in Norway. Initially there were fears the introduced musk oxen would compete with reindeer for food, but it now appears the opposite is true. They prefer different foods and so may actually help one another by eating away the vegetation the other doesn't want. Fallow deer are found across most of Europe today, despite the fact if you look them up, you'll see European fallow deer are native to Asian Turkey. Fallow deer have been introduced to almost every European country and introductions began a long time ago, since before Jesus was born even. These can actually be considered reintroductions though, and indeed, the earliest example of Pleistocene rewilding, as fallow deer were present across much of Europe during the Pleistocene. They are also the closest living relative of the largest servine deer to ever exist, Megaloceros, which went extinct around 8,000 years ago. Fallow deer and Megaloceros actually had a fairly similar ecology also, both having a diet consisting of more grasses and herbs when compared to other European deer. So the introduction of fallow deer around Europe is not just a reintroduction in itself, but also a proxy introduction for its cousin, Megaloceros. One of Europe's most important keystone species is the wild boar. They have a bad reputation for their destruction in America and Australia, where they're non-native, but their rootling is hugely beneficial for seed dispersal and germination and habitat shaping and creation in Europe, not to mention being one of the main scavengers on the continent. While on the topic of meat-eating, Let's look at Europe's megafauna predators. You've got grey wolves, brown bears and even polar bears actually, found on the Norwegian island of Svalbard, where they live alongside the world's smallest reindeer subspecies, the adorable Svalbard reindeer. Though not quite megafauna themselves, both wolverines and Eurasian lynx sometimes prey on megafauna. Both have been recorded preying on moose calves and adult reindeer. Lynx have been recorded preying on every European deer species in fact. Again, not megafauna, 
but Europe's largest native bird is the Great Bustard, amongst the largest flying birds in the world. Bustards are not the largest wild bird in Europe anymore though. There is a wild population of Greater Rhea, sometimes known as South American Ostrich, living wild in Germany. Having escaped from a farm at the start of the millennium, they reached a population high of more than 500 in 2018 until the government put a plan in place to reduce their population and there are less than 100 there today. There are several feral horse herds found across Europe, like the Exmoor ponies in the UK, Camargue horses of France, but there are also true wild horse herds in Europe now, thanks to reintroductions. Chevalski's wild horse has been introduced to Spain by rewilding Europe in recent years and in the late 1990s they were introduced to the Chernobyl exclusion zone the most diverse place in Europe in terms of megafauna and large predators. You can hear all about that in this video. 31 wild horses were introduced initially and they've been steadily rising ever since, reaching 150 by 2018 and still increasing. Wild ass from Asia have also been reintroduced to Europe as a proxy for their extinct European cousins. They were introduced to the Danube Delta by rewilding Europe back in 2020, beginning with a herd of 20. They've been breeding steadily and a further 20 were introduced in 2022. Rewilding Europe are hoping to introduce them to Iberia in the near future, so hopefully this is just the beginning of the re-establishment of wild ass in Europe. Thanks to rewilding efforts, Europe has seen massive increases in our megafauna and other important species over recent decades, with wild boar, wolves, bears, bison, lynx and beavers all having massive population gains. Not to mention the reintroduction of wild ass, wild horses, semi-wild cattle and water buffalo. Europe is rewilding and hopefully it's just the beginning. Are you aware of any other megafauna or predators of megafauna living wild in Europe today? If so, let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and subscribe to the channel to help it grow. Thank you as always for watching.